Miracy. Check-ins are huge, especially for the kinds of people that the scatter, I call my people the scattered people. If you don't have something on the calendar as a check-in with a live human, it almost doesn't exist. So it's easy to, you know, ignore a reminder. It's easy to ignore an email. But when it's a human, it's not as easy. So the fact that we've added in these calls, that's a game changer. Hello, and welcome to Just Between Coaches, the podcast that tackles difficult coaching conversations head on. My name is Melinda Cohen, and I run a business called The Coaches Console. The Coaches Console has supported more than 50,000 entrepreneurs in creating their own profitable coaching businesses. On this podcast, I invite other coaches to explore and discuss difficult issues or questions that you might be having with your clients, and also the difficult conversations that you might need to have with yourself. Today, I'm thrilled to be talking to another Coaches Console coach, a certified productivity coach, Carol Williams. She and I are going to talk about how to guide your client to focus on the important and usually painful steps involved in the achievement of any goal. Carol Williams has a passion for productivity. She's a professional organizer and owner of Efficient Productivity Systems. She supports and empowers individuals and teams to realize their goals and dreams, particularly in the area of time, task, and priority management. Welcome, Carol. Thank you. I'm excited about today's topic, Carol. Like, you know I love productivity and systems, but let's start a little bit with your background. What brought you to coaching? Right. Great question, Melinda. The easy answer is I got laid off. So I didn't have a job and I needed to do something. So I had to reinvent myself in 2009. And I was drawn towards professional organizing because I had a lot going on and I needed the systems for me. So I thought, well, I can go ahead and help other people. Pretty soon after I started that in 2009, I realized I didn't want to be in people's closets. So I pivoted to focus on business. and. What I know is that whatever we resist persists. And I resisted because really the truth is, is that by client number two, I already knew I was a coach, but I resisted calling myself a coach because I didn't have the certifications. So I kind of put the brakes on for several years and had some stuff going on in my personal life as well. But in 2015, no, or maybe 14, I can't remember now, I took that front page of my website and with my business coach at the times, called myself then a productivity coach. And he's like, you got to own this. So I did. So I totally came in through the back door. (laughs) And then I got my certifications as a coach. It's kind of like, I don't know. I just sort of started where I was and listened more and more to what was making sense. And now I am really good at that, actually, listening to inside and helping other folks listen to inside because that's pretty powerful stuff. It is. And that's one of the things that you and I share on our journeys. We both took the, I got fired route and then dove into the coaching venue, which I still don't know if I hadn't been fired, if I actually would have pursued coaching. So I can finally say I'm grateful for being fired. It took me a long time to get there. Uh, But uh, without that, I don't know if I'd be where I am today. Now, you have an interesting niche. You started talking about it, but tell us more about your niche. Okay, sure. So I help scattered entrepreneurs who may identify as neurodiverse or have ADHD, and I empower them to have the life that they really want. And sometimes it a little bit comes in in their business too. It just depends on what is right in front of me. But basically, we go from scattered to peaceful. And that's really what it looks like. That's powerful right there, that journey. There's a lot behind that, but scattered to peaceful. Now, just to clarify for our audience, do you have ADHD or ADD yourself? No, my son does though. But the reason I got into it, which I think is really the question, is that when I was a professional organizer and I was trying to figure out how do I make a living at this, I was told okay, a lot of people that are disorganized have issues with their prefrontal cortex. 
which is what keeps us organized. I've always had this passion for learning how the brain works, you know, and I found an ADHD coach through that journey. She had ADHD herself. I learned a ton about it. And what I learned was that I love people that identify as ADHD or neurodiverse and that these, these people are, are the people that change the world. And I learned through her that it's not a disorder, it's a gift. And so I spent years actually in her office where she would work with the kids, like in after school stuff and help them through school because school is not meant for people that aren't a certain cookie cutter way. And I would work with the parents, getting them organized. And that's how I got into this particular avatar. Now, your clients, they don't have to have a diagnosis to come to you, right? No, not at all. And now earlier, you talked about that journey going from scattered to peaceful. So let's jump in with that. What do you mean by scattered? Oh, yeah. And I'm going to tell a story with his permission of one of my most favorite clients. He self-identifies as neurodiverse. He came to me because he had heard me actually on a podcast (laughs) and found me on social media and listened to me. And he said, okay, I just want more order in my life. And he said, in fact, I feel like I'm a cotton ball on fire. And I was like, you feel like you're a cotton ball. And that, that was, that was a visual. So, you know, the things I hear are I'm on the hamster wheel. I need more time in my day. I never follow through on things. I get like almost done and then I get bored. I like to leave things open. But that cotton ball on fire, that was really something. Yeah, it's a powerful image. And whether somebody associates with that or has had an actual diagnosis or, you know, so many of the students and clients that come into our, I mean, you're a coach for us. You you see this as well you know, talking about more order in my life. You feel like you're on the hamster wheel. You need more time in your day. You're leaving things open. You're getting bored and you're going on to something else. I call it the bright, shiny object syndrome. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so anybody, what I have found that steps out of their comfort zone, Mm. this is their world. Overwhelmed, (laughs) scattered, frustrated. And when they start that new journey, really, I mean, for us, it's entrepreneurs. But it could apply to any niche that when you have a client that says yes to working with you, they've just taken a leap out of their comfort zone. And all of this is true. Do you see that as well? Yeah. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. You're absolutely right. The difference is that people who will identify with the words kind of know that they see the world differently and they know that there are certain ways that they work better. Oftentimes I hear them say, well, I'm a visual learner. If somebody says, I'm a visual learner and says all these other things, you start to see the patterns, right, over time. So while you're right that when somebody starts the program that you run or any new program, there will be that overwhelm. There's some people that will just kind of settle right into it and go. And there's other people that will start quickly, get overwhelmed and start telling themselves lies about what isn't true. And there's other strategies kind of behind the scenes that they sort of need to really stay organized that maybe are different than the quote unquote average brain. Right. Yeah. It's a a slightly different approach, experience, understanding, journey, like everything is different. And so what are the usual explanations that you get from clients who aren't participating in the work or have a hard time focusing, aren't following through? What are some of those things that you hear from clients? Well, it's almost never that they don't want to. It's usually if somebody kind of falls off the wagon, they forget. They need a lot of reminders. There needs to be a ton of external reminders, accountability. It's out of sight, out of mind. They want to do it and they planned on doing it. But they just don't because until it's a routine that is so ingrained and it takes a while to get that routine and then even then it goes away. So what I hear is, oh, geez, I'm sorry, I forgot or something like that. Then the other thing is, you know, the one we hear a lot, like the old life gets in the way stuff. It just tends to get in the way more. Or I got one of them I just heard, um, I got swept away by my day. Mm. It's, it's just hard. It's hard for these folks to stay focused more so than 
just the average shiny object. And when you are working with these particular types of clients, you know, with what's actually stopping them, you're asking them about this and they usually have a hard time describing what's going on, right? Like, isn't a lot of this, would you call it subconscious behavior? Yeah, until we identify it. But it's like we need many deadlines, for example. So if the danger of having a long-term client that has a brain this way is there's this, well, I have plenty of time. It's like plenty of time syndrome. Or the other thing they might say is like, I work really, really well at the last minute. There has to be a deadline, like a time scarcity. When I talk about that, I said, oh, I see. You need that time scarcity, like because that catapults you into action. And then it'll be like, oh, yeah, that's what it is. So we create these little mini challenges within the work. You know, I've learned that from other coaches on our team that like the fun part, it's got to be fun with contests and prizes and mini deadlines. Like I do that all the time. They love it, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that answered your question, but I was trying to find an example instead of just a generic answer. Yeah. So it really speaks to the behavior, right? Until they can create a new pattern and a new habit, they may not be aware of it. And so it's our job to create the container for them to succeed in right out of the gate. Yeah. And then the other thing too, is even when the routine is set, it needs help staying set. It's almost guaranteed that it will run off the rails and any little thing can do it. Certainly something like going on vacation. So I'll have lots of conversations about, okay, great. When you come back from vacation on that Sunday, what's happening on that Monday? So we need to look at allowing that space, transition time, things like that. Okay, great. So to bring back your routine, let's start small. I want to do this, this, this. Okay, great. Let's start with number one and we'll nail that and we'll go. So it's baby steps and bite side pieces and and reminders. This is great. And it's the in-between, it's the transitions that really require more attention. You know, one example that comes to mind is I have learned in order for me to be productive when I get to my office in the morning and sit down at my desk, the day before when I wrap up, the last thing I do is I look at my calendar and I'm like, okay, what's the first three things that I need to do tomorrow? Or what's the first thing that I'm going to sit down to do tomorrow? And what do I need to have? What notes, what materials, whatever it is. And I prepare it and I get it ready. And then I leave. And so that my transition is in place and covered, and then I'm not wasting time. And so I love how you talk about bridging the interruptions and planning for that and breaking it down into bite-sized pieces. Now, I was just, it's so interesting that this coincided with the topic that we've got today. I was just in a discussion in the mastermind that I'm a part of, and this question is perfect for this topic. And what we were talking about in that discussion thread was how do you train your students and members, your clients, to be more productive when they first start working with you or start in one of your programs. So I'd love to get your input on that. If we're going to call me productivity expert and someone says, how do you make somebody more productive? Well, the first thing I'm going to want to know is how you want to measure that. Like, what exactly does that mean to you or to, you know, what result do you want? And then we can work backwards, right? And figure that out. Check-ins are huge, especially for the kinds of people that the scatter, I call my people the scattered people. If you don't have something on the calendar as a check-in with a live human, it almost doesn't exist. So it's easy to ignore a reminder. It's easy to ignore an email. But when it's a human, it's not as easy. So the fact that we've added in these calls, that's a game changer. So you notice that I didn't say, well, teach them how to block their time. We got to do that too. Uh, we, we've got to dig into what's really going on behind the scenes. Like what's really behind No Time Tina in the, in the villains and superheroes that we teach? Like what's really happening, right? Yeah, it was another game changer when we identified the villains and superpowers, the patterns, when people would disengage or disappear or disconnect in our programs or in our coaching Giving them that information and that intel ahead of time 
help to quote unquote train our students to be more productive because they were getting in their own way a lot less. Now, I know you've got a signature system, right? You call it the productivity success cake. What is that and how do you work with this? Tell us more about this. Okay, sure. What's the cake and how does it work? So um, after many years of being certified in other programs and um, just uh, listening and just like you teach, Melinda, after a while, you start to see patterns over and over and over again. And then you create a system based on what you're seeing time and time again. And so that's what this really is. And so I'll go back to how are the problems being presented? So they are being presented like, I can't stay focused. I'm procrastinating. I'm not doing the work. I put it down and I ignore it, all that kind of jazz. Well, what we do, and on my website, there's a little quiz you can take called the productivity quiz where we go through each and every layer so that a person can self-assess and say, oh, I get it, and this is how it goes. The productivity layer um, itself is really layer three. And what people tend to discover as they go through the process is that it doesn't start with that layer, right? We start with the bottom layer, which is the health layer. And the health layer is made up of several pieces. They're all made up of several pieces. But basically, that bottom layer is made up of the pieces called food, exercise, sleep, meditation, and medicine or supplements, especially medicine, because if we have something that we need for a diagnosis, we got to make sure that that's taken care of, right? Otherwise, it's just supplements. That represents the health layer. The next layer up is the environment layer. And so that's everything from your physical space to your circle of support to lighting your light to having those motivated and clear goals. It's like, you know, it's kind of like what are you surrounding yourself with? Then and only then do we fully move into that productivity layer, that power focus, that remembering to remember, time, tasks, procrastination, interruptions, et cetera. After that, we're at the top tier, you know, and that's where we have that rinse, repeat, sharpen the saw, continuous improvement, upward spiral, as the coach's console will say in our high-end programs. And frosting is the why. Now I kind of say, hey, it all needs to sit on like a platter of purpose. So if your platter isn't even very stable, you might want to, you know, start with your purpose stuff. Okay. And then finally, last but not least is the candles. And they're very important. And I need to thank you personally, Melinda, for instilling how important this is uh, in, in my work. And that is the celebrations. And uh, yeah, so the candles are the celebrations and we have to do that. So that's kind of an overview of the cake. And so that's the container that your clients will experience how they navigate, you know, whatever they've come to you for coaching in, right? And if I understood correctly, like the health and environment, those bottom layers, before somebody can be productive, you've got to help set themselves up for being successful and being productive. Correct. And that does not mean you need a 10 in everything, like I have them rate themselves one to 10. You can kind of work it in layers working up. But what we don't want is we don't want like a zero. And so for example, sleep, I put that right in the middle. So there are five spaces, right? So right in the center there, that's sleep on the bottom layer and the health layer. I said, it's not like Jenga. You can't just push it through and have everything hold. <laughs> There's a lot of people with sleep issues that wonder why they can't stay focused. <laughs> Right. And it's laughable, but it happens like all the time. Now, walk us through your process of uncovering like the real issue or struggle or pain for your clients. Yeah, thanks for asking. So what I do actually is I do that right at the very, very beginning, the inventory assess and discover. So right at the beginning, I go pretty deep into, um, into what your goal is, why it's important. What happens if you don't achieve your goal? What happens if you do achieve your goal? Like what are the prizes and punishments? That's what I call them. And what's at stake? And through that process, some pretty deep stuff comes out. Often there's, oh gosh, well, I don't really have a goal. So what that means is we need to seriously just start with, okay, Let's make sure that you have enough water every day. Let's make sure that you're having enough sleep every day and so on like that. And 
it's not a turnkey thing. What happens is, I think you're asked a little bit about what about those painful places that get opened up and they reveal themselves. And I'll use your words that I borrowed. And it's like massive compassion, right? You have to have that massive compassion for people and hold that space in that container because otherwise those things are just not going to come forward. One thing I learned from way back when, when I started, I didn't know what I didn't know. I just thought, well, I'm going to help people get more done in less time because I'm really good at that. And I wasn't holding the kind of space that I can hold now and going deeply. So if coaches are listening to this, wondering how they can help their clients really get to those deep places that they can fall apart so they can get rebuilt. It's really that compassion and that space holding in such a deep way. Yeah, I love that. Now, do you have any other tips for coaches for what to do when their client has a hard time focusing and doing the work to move forward? The short answer is listen, listen for what's not being said, you know, ask, follow them, use your amazing coaching skills, throw out the book and just hear them and it'll get uncovered. We sometimes tend to want to do some formula, but at the end of the day, great coaching has to do with great listening and intuition and powerful what questions. And that's really all it boils down to. And it's just practice, practice and become the master that you are. I would have one final thing that I just thought of when we were thinking about how to train our students. I've said it before on some other shows, but I want to bring it. I think it's an important piece to help our students and clients be productive, be efficient, working smarter, getting results when they hire us. And that's this idea of onboarding. You know, so much of what we talked about, you know, you talked about having external reminders or those many challenges or breaking it down into small bite-sized pieces. And a lot of that can be done in onboarding like covering that gap between when somebody says yes and the moment they have the first session with you or the first module or the first lesson, really being very intentional about how you bridge that gap. In that moment, that's where you really train your students and clients on how to show up inside your package or your program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's summarize a few things that we've talked about today. Whenever we're taking our clients like Carol said, from scattered to peaceful, whether they associate with that neurodiverse or ADHD or ADD or some sort of diagnosis, or they are just taking a leap out of their comfort zone, it's important to remember that we have to provide our students, our clients with external reminders. One of my favorite takeaways is what Carol talked about, having those mini, M-I-N-I, those mini deadlines to help keep them accountable and moving forward, to make it fun and break our coaching, our programs, our modules, our lessons, our whatever we're, however we're working with our clients, breaking them into bite-sized pieces and bringing in the celebration. And then when it comes to training our students and our clients, I love how Carol said, first, we have to ask, what does it mean to be more productive in our coaching package, in our program? And how do we want to measure that? From there, you can work backwards with whatever you're creating. That was one of my top highlighted takeaways. And then having the live human interaction, that that can't be overlooked. If you're offering online courses or group programs, having those check-in milestone calls, having those live group calls, and then getting to how to block your time, how to plan your time, how to prioritize, that there's certainly room for that. And then I love that we talked about things that really doesn't seem to have anything to do with productivity, but oh, it does. Holding space, having massive compassion, uh, listening for what's not being said, and making sure that we're always bringing magic when they take those steps and hit those milestones. Carol, any parting words? Well, that was really well said. I loved how you wrapped that up. (laughs) Thank you. No, that about covers it. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for listening to this episode of Just Between Coaches. And also a big thank you to Carol Williams for this fascinating conversation. She's in the middle of building a community as well, Unscatter Me, Business and Life Productivity Hacks, in which she's committed to helping clients to improve their lives. 
The link will be in the show note. And you can find out more about Carol at www.eps-time.com. That's E-P-S and then a dash time.com. Carol, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Melinda. I'm Melinda Cohen, and you've been listening to Just Between Coaches. Just Between Coaches is part of the Mirror CFM network, which also includes Course Lab, Making It, and Once Upon a Business. This episode was produced by Cynthia Lamb. Mishi Lance scripted and assembled the episode. Danny Eni is our executive producer. If you don't want to miss future episodes, please subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you like the show, please leave us a starred review. It's the best way to help us get these ideas to more people. And if you have a question for Just Between Coaches, put the show title in the subject line and send it to podcasts at miracy.com. That's podcasts, plural, at miracy, M-I-R-A-S-E-E.com.